G'day farmers, if you're listening to this very episode for 2023, can you please click the subscribe or follow button on whatever platform you're listening to? So out of all the listeners we have each week, each month, only 60% of you are following and we'd like to get that number up so that we can get the information out to you. Each week we produce two episodes, so make sure you subscribe to the Farms Advice Podcast. Let's get in to the very first episode. Holy, it is 2023 already, farmers. So welcome back. Well, welcome to the 2023 Series 4 for the Farms Advice Podcast. It's been a long time coming. I've actually given myself three years to get the podcast up to scratch. Um, and this is actually the f- first full season, the third full season of the Farnsworth podcast and everything that we do. And just like what we do with ag tech, I sort of think that you don't really get too many key trends within less than that three-year period. You can get some good triggers and indicators, but to actually get the trends, you need a solid three years backing onto it. And that's exactly what I've done with the podcast. So actually doing a little bit of what I preach um, and what we talk about with ag tech industry and also the farmers of how that we can measure the trends. Everything in farming is sort of long-term focused and working on a daily routine. So getting those long-term goals set in place. And I think it's really come through for the Farmswise podcast. And that is all because of you. For anyone that listens to this podcast, for the very first episode of 2023, um, I just couldn't thank you enough for tuning in, whether you tuned in for our very first episode with my mate Macca, and you'll really start to notice a difference in the guests that we get on, but more so in the way that I probably conduct myself. And this podcast is a huge self personal development journey um, to improve how I communicated. Um, but also I love the game of marketing and also how I can tie that into working in Australian agriculture. And actually it's super weird being able to know these random facts about Australian agriculture. If the old man were just talking or whatever, I'll come up about facts about our backers or something I saw on TikTok or something I came across in my research of a guest or in research of a social media post that I'm doing at the time. It's, Quite bizarre, but I can't thank you enough. And also to the guests and partnerships that we ran through series last year. They've been really influential on the listeners. Although you shouldn't get all your information from a podcast and we're not financial accountant or equipment buyers um, for that. I'll have to answer none later. But for this one, um, yeah, coming back, can't thank you enough for what's been Farms Advice, the growing community. We've nearly got 100,000 followers across all the platforms, TikTok being the number one. And actually, believe it or not, on TikTok, Farms Advice, the hashtag, has actually reached 22 million people. That's the last time I looked, actually, and I haven't checked it lately. It may be a little bit more. But what the podcast is, is a podcast. But what Farms Advice is for everyone out there, to pass on the buck, pass on a piece of farms advice that you may know. It may be to your kids, to your parents, or a completely different set of family, a different business, one that's in town that works within agriculture, how we can improve each other. And I think really that peer-to-peer learning is the best word of mouth and also for farmers out there to learn. So if you're not talking to your next door neighbour, a podcast is the next best thing to find out not only what your neighbour is doing, but also we're in Central West, New South Wales, near Dubbo, and what the bloody hell is old mate over in WA doing to improve his yield on his crop? Or does he mark his lambs a funny way or pick his blueberries in a more efficient way? How can we actually start the conversation there? It all happens by getting on the what you would say is an ordinary sort of farmer. I'm just a farmer. That is the most frequent 
response I get back when I try to get a farmer onto the podcast and how we can navigate around that and actually I tell them that they're the expertise on the podcast because they've got 20, 30, even five years of experience on farm. They know what they're talking about. They've been doing it day in, day out and how this ordinary information to them can be quite extraordinary to someone very close or very far away now, especially we've got a global audience as well. We've, you never know what you're doing and how that could improve another person's operation. Just a slight trigger, slight difference, or it could be quite drastic and actually really change their operation within doing that, but you don't really know, get to find out those results, unfortunately. But we have had some excellent feedback in 2022's episodes. And we'll go through and run a few facts and figures towards you. So now we've surpassed 160,000 downloads in 2022 and really keen to see what else we can drive out of that. This is the figure that gets me going each week to produce the two episodes we were doing um, of late each week Um, because that's really the feedback that I get. Unless you leave a review on Apple or Spotify, wink, um, we can't actually find out what you're interested in. We can only go off by the numbers of what the listenership is for this episode. Say it's family succession, that applies to everyone on a farm and how that happens, whether it happens now or tomorrow or in 10 years, um, you're going to need some information to guide you through there or make that transition a little bit smoother. Um, You only know what you know. In 2022, we reached 60 countries and we produced 80 episodes in 2022. Um, And that's out of 167 episodes in total. So there's a lot of content on there that you can go back to and have a listen and just find one key takeaway in each episode and see what that may be for you or how you can interpret it into your own farming sort of template and what that means. So this year or in 2022, Instagram, I surveyed, put a survey out on the stories and not everyone comes across these stories, of course. And out of the 6,000 followers we have and whoever hit that story, 40 farmers had actually implemented and took something from an episode and improved their own daily routine. And also the other day, this doesn't happen all the time, but some solid feedback. The other day, a listener of the show said, after listening to your series, we went ahead and ordered one. They really enjoyed the peace of mind knowing that the cattle performing were performing more than 400 k's away and that dips back into our OptiWay series. So it's actually connecting the farmers to the information and adding in that credibility. And if we can do any more to assist in how ag tech can enhance what you do on farm and even at our own farm, we've got some more elements into our own farm, family farm for this year as well. So if you've got any suggestions on how we can help connect or you're an ag tech out there, how we can give, provide you the platform, an episode, a series to connect you to the farmers that are actually trying to look for this information, but we don't actually have all day to sit down and go through Google and sift through the endless pit of information of documents and everything. We just want, a couple of people to speak about it and get that information out there. And we can, we can take that away and have a think about it and not actually implement on it, but just dwell on it, see what it may do if it's been played out in a similar scenario as your own farm and how that may happen. So that was some excellent feedback for the podcast. If you have some feedback from 2022, we'd love to hear what you thought of an episode or, even what you implemented would be amazing to hear. Some of the biggest conversations also off the back of that that we had that probably people implemented because they were most listened to were family trust and how they work, what's happening to the rule changes, and that was produced with Byfields. 
an amazing episode there. I think Ryan Norton was on the back of that one. Digital recording, and this goes back to ag tech and are we actually getting rid of the notebook or are we adding on to that notebook for the farmers, whether you're a younger farmer, older farmer, doesn't really matter. Digital recording, that was a big hit with the Ag World series as well. Carbon for pastoralists is the next one. The third one, that was with Corey Hancock and actually opening up, um, not storing carbon in soils, but also using the vegetation around your property, your station, um, more so up in the northern end of Australia with the larger stations out there having a role in that and seeing how they can work in that and maybe even garner an extra income stream off the back of that. And one of the interesting conversations I had this year was about private capital and its role within Australian agriculture, and that was with Ben Craw from Oxley Capital Partners, Um I nerded out a little bit on this and some of the questions I didn't know, but off the back of listening to that episode, I found out a fair bit about how it can improve for private companies, um, that private capital and how it all sort of works as well. So great one there with Ben. Most recently, people and culture and what matters within Australian family farms is our people, our family that we work with day in, day out whether you get on or you don't, or you have a tiff, a barney, here or there, we still need to have the people in agriculture to actually get the job done. Ag tech's not taking over. A robot won't take your job. You'll have to manage that robot. And it comes back to the people in Australian agriculture and the people, as in you, a listener, on farm and how you can improve that culture and through improving your own communication. That one... It's a bit of a personal development journey with Stuart on that episode. So go back if you haven't listened to that one already. Um, rising risk of biosecurity. That was a huge one for 2022 with FMD hitting the headlines around the country. Um, that was brought by GPA series, Grain Producers Australia. Colin Bettles there and what farmers could actually do to minimise the impact on their own farm. And as of yet, it's been held off Australian shores and continues to do so. There was a bit of a lack of exposure to what the Australian government was doing behind the scenes, but turns out they're doing quite a bit off the back end there. And moving off biosecurity and off-farm investing and how this can actually ensure you have a future in farming um, it could be the difference or it couldn't be whatever you take of it or farm investing that was with biofuels and how it can actually work. And last but not least, adoption of ag tech and what sort of barriers, challenges it may bring about. That was with Farmers to Founders series and it really struck a chord with a lot of you through socials and also through the listens that came through with that episode. Really outstanding to see what the big conversations are that we had this year and all conversations are a big one. But if one episode is listened to by one farmer, I think that still holds some real value there. And as I'm looking to chase the numbers, I'm also looking to help those smaller farmers out there that don't always have the access to information. So we can go to improve further. So across social media, Probably rambling on here, but let's get into it. Across social media, you've probably seen ins and outs of what is in for 2023 and what is out. So we've done a bit of a list here, and the ins for 2023 are family farmers expanding, cattle or sheep grids every day of the week, guests arriving on time. Hopefully that's not you this year. Dad not arriving on time, starting succession for your family farm, the farm's advice to grow in community, which I couldn't be more thankful for, and dialing in on the books, getting into the office and actually getting to know. This may be if you're a younger one in the family and you're getting to know the books as the family farm. The next one's using ag tech to save time and improve your own daily routine and 
work dogs. This goes out to my Kelpie, Milo. He's had a rough trot, a run over his foot later on the year, and a few months before that, he actually got bitten by a snake, was dead on the table, and actually came back. So thanks for coming back, Milo. You save a fair bit of time out in the paddock. And what is out for 2023? Not shutting the gate and thinking you had. Big Farmer Andy, if you're listening, that one's directed towards you. Not getting a tractor for Christmas as much as I wanted it didn't happen. And putting off succession, whatever sort of stage you are, um, if you're in the early stages or the later stages, now is probably the time for you. So out, don't put off your succession plan. And this is probably going to be splitting hairs here, but old notebooks, are they out? Not really, but really and are you moving towards digital means? Indy, a new lab who doesn't work, she's definitely got to get out into the paddock and start working and pulling her weight, paying for her own dog cubes, and working 24-7 and getting nowhere, working a little bit smarter. Our friends over at Farm Owners Academy um, preach about working smarter, not harder all the time, and it really... Once you get your processes in place, I, I suppose it really starts to shine out for your own family farm or even if you're a corporate, I think they know a little bit about that. And so let's move in to the most listened episode for 2022. Most listened to episode was The Profitable Mindset with Dr. Kate Burke. I think that heading probably hooked a lot of you in to see how that you could improve your own mindset, but also making your farm profitable. And we haven't done this before, but Farms of Ice would like to recognize its own Farmer of the Year on the podcast. And that Farmer of the Year is Mitch McNabb from McNabb Orchards. He was in the Ag World series, but and his title was How a Family Orchard Uses Data on Farm. And that was back in the Ag World series. But also there's a lot of strings to Mitch's bow and what he's doing for Victorian fruit growers and what he's doing for his family farm as well. They've got a fair bit going on down there and it's really interesting to see how they're trying to improve their own farm. So Mitch, Farmer of the Year from the Farms of Ice team, well done if you're listening in. So this episode has actually gone on a lot longer than I thought. I've always dreaded talking to myself, to the computer. Um, but to round it off, what's to come in 2023? Some big things to come. We'll continue doing the Tuesday and Friday farm yarn just to give out that extra content out there to see how we can improve you, your daily routine by one listen or two listens a week to see what you get up to. Um, but some big stuff to come in series four. Can't believe it. We'll be looking to get some ambassadors on for each sort of sector within agriculture. So if you think your profile is suited to becoming an ambassador of your agricultural sector, please hit us up at hello at farmswise.com.au. Um, we've got huge series to fill you in on, just like last year, but bigger and better for 2023. We've got some huge events that we'll talk about later on in the piece, and we're going to have some great guests on the show. But thank you for tuning in, and I can't wait to get farming in 2023. Thanks for listening, farmers. Make sure you like and subscribe to this podcast. And if you liked any episode in 2022, please leave us a review on Apple or Spotify podcast platforms and it will go a long way into allowing other Australian and global farmers out there to find the Farms Wise podcast. Leave a review, five stars, it doesn't matter. Thanks for tuning in and we can't wait to get this season underway.